Good morning and welcome to the very first edition of Mini Papster at Your Place. Uh, this version is going to look a little bit different. Um, it's going to be very short and sweet for you to use as a resource in your life group. And um, hopefully you are right now sitting together with your life group ready to watch this so that you can then go on and discuss it very very soon but if you're not able to be with your group i'm so glad you are still uh, joining us this morning you too can answer the questions at the end they will be on the screen for you wherever you are whoever you're with we are just so happy that you are here i'm not going to say too much uh, but just want to of course welcome you here this morning and just to remind you, um, this week is our first week of, of meeting in, in life groups. And so there are groups running at church. 360 met last night, which was so, so cool, so awesome. Uh, our epic uh, kids met this morning, um, or are meeting this morning, and, uh, and our adult groups too. So if you haven't already linked up with a life group, um, now is the time to please do that. We really would love everyone that is able to to be connected in. So if you need some help with that, if you're looking for a group, please contact Karen or anyone else on staff and we'll be happy to help you find a group um, and get you linked in because um, we really, really would love to have everyone connected. That is gonna be happening for the next six weeks as we're trying this new way of doing things uh, where we meet in smaller groups. So we are really looking forward to, to hearing your feedback too on how that's going. So this is week one. Um, I hope you're enjoying it already, being back together with your groups, um, but we really hope that you enjoy your time together today. Another friendly reminder uh, that you are still able to give your tithes and offerings. And in this time uh, where a lot of things uh, have been cancelling and it's just so uncertain, uh, we really, really do appreciate um, that you do still love to give. So we would still really encourage you to do that if you feel called to do that. Um, you can do that by a uh, direct bank transfer or by the push pay app. All those details are on the screen right now. Thank you so much um, for your giving. We really, really do appreciate it, church. But right now, without further ado, um, I am going to hand it over to Victor. Victor is going to be uh, uh, leading us through our third installment of our New Year, New You series. And I just know he has an awesome word for us this morning, a word that is going to launch us into some really, really cool discussions. So without further ado, let's hear from Victor. Good morning, Pabsda. Thank you for staying connected and joining us. It is my privilege to share a short message with you today. Have you heard the saying, no man is an island? I'm sure you have. And this is the title of my short message. This famous line, no man is an island, was coined in 1624 by an English poet, John Donne. And in this book that he titled No Man is an Island, he talked about life being interconnected and interdependent. John Donne's No Man is an Island is about the connection between all of humankind. Dan essentially argues that people need each other and are better together than they are in isolation because every individual is one piece of that greater whole and that is humanity itself. It is during the times of isolation, yes, literal isolation, when we need to keep distance, when we are almost encouraged to stay away from people, I would like to encourage you to stay connected, stay together and be strong. I'm not proposing to break the rules. It's all good to follow the current health ministry advice. I am talking about going through this hard time together. We are human beings who are better and stronger together. We experience greater fulfillment in life when we have meaningful connections with other people. I'm sure you feel the same. I'm sure you know this. And here is the story I would like to share with you and unpack as my encouragement to you 
So turn with me to Exodus chapter 17 and we'll read verses from 8 to 14. We read this story from Exodus chapter 17 verse 8 onwards. The Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, Choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered, and Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on one side, one on the other side, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, write this on a scroll as something to be remembered and make sure that Joshua hears it. Don't you find this story amazingly interesting? This story has all the makings of a spiritual disaster. Israel has been discouraged in the wilderness. The trials of lack of food and water have already taken their toll on the Israelites. They have only been a few weeks in the desert. In their journey to Sinai, their morale is already low and now they are attacked. The weakest, the most vulnerable part of the train of the Israelite people is swarmed upon by the tribe of desert dwellers. Now, it makes perfect sense that Joshua is appointed for this task. Moses is already uh, 80 years old by now. He's not in the kind of shape to lead an army into the battle. So Joshua is, is a younger man and is charged with gathering a suitable force and leading them. Moses, on the other hand, explains that he is going to station himself at the top of the hill with the staff of God in his hands. And Moses tells us in verse 11 that when he held his staff up, the army of Israel were winning. But when his um, arms got tired and he brought the staff down, the Amalekites would regain the advantage. It's pretty clear that God wants our focus, our attention to be on the road, on the staff. Once you have decided, uh, then you will have to ask the following question. What is the message there? And if he wants me to look at the stuff at the road and think about that, then what's the message that he wants me to get? There is so much we can draw from this short story, but I would like to focus only on three ideas. God was sending at least three messages by the staff being lifted up by Moses and how it provided their victory over Amalekites. And this is what we will focus on. The, uh, here is the message given to Moses by the staff being lifted up. Moses was very instrumental in leading the people out of Egypt. And there is always a temptation for him to take on the credit. Moses once again learns that it's not his smarts as a great leader who selects the best warriors and strategizes the best plan of the attack to secure a victory. It's very clear to him that God is fighting for his people. Moses, you are simply a human being who God can use for his glory. And also, Moses, although you are good at what you do, you can't do it by yourself. Your hands grow tired. You can't just do it alone. You need people who support you. And when you grow weary, they can hold your hands up. Moses, you are not an island. You need other people around you. 
that staff took Moses' eyes from himself to God. And when his hands grew tired, Moses' eyes were turned to his companions and support and help. There is so, there is no such thing as a self-made man. You will reach your goals only with the help of others. Moses, you are only a small link in the big chain in God's hands. Look to God and look to others and you will be a successful leader. Here's the message given to Aaron and her by the staff raised up in, in the air. The staff had to be held up for Joshua and his army to win. And there was no chance that one man could have been so strong to continue to hold that staff up there on and on. God could have done it in so many different ways. But he was teaching Moses and Aaron and her the simple truth. No man is an island. It's not just Moses who God works out his miracles. Aaron, her. Although God is fighting for you, he requires that you collaborate. And get this, no one is as smart as all of us. None of us is as strong as all of us. Here is the third message that that staff was sending to the people who were fighting. And all of those uh, people at that time, and also to us who are fighting life's challenges. Again, it is very clear. The rod is both a symbol of the presence and power of God. It is the physical sign of the might that God welds on behalf of Israel. It is God who is fighting for Israel. His power is going to be more important than theirs. And he is the one that they should depend on for victory and the one to whom they should give the glory. At the same time, the victory is only achieved as they all collaborate. Now get this, even though God is helping in a mighty way, they all need each other to succeed. The delivery of God's power happens when everybody is participating and bringing their share to the common good. Now, can you create this picture in your mind? Joshua is leading the army of warriors. Moses is holding the, um, the staff up uh, in the air. Aaron and her are holding the hands of Moses. Are you seeing this beautiful picture of interconnectedness, collaboration, interdependence? All the way from God to the leader, to the support people, to the frontline people are working together. No man is an island. No war is ever won by one person. Many of us are more capable than some of us, but none of us is as capable as all of us. Friends, in the days of isolation and distancing, I would like to inspire you to be human beings who need each other to thrive, be fulfilled and be successful. Let's not pretend we can be an island doing life individually by ourselves. Let's embrace our human nature and be proactive in connecting with each other. Let's acknowledge our dependence on other people for our success and accept their gift of service, compassion, and support. Just as God was helping the people of Israel, they still had to be together. They had to work together, stay connected, collaborate, because they were interdependent and they won the, the battle because they were all bringing in their contribution and support. So, who are you going to connect with in the coming days? Who will you offer your helping hand? Who will you offer a listening ear? Who will you reach out to when you feel lonely? Wow, thank you so much, Victor. I love, always love hearing Victor speak and today was no different. Thank you so much for that awesome message and that awesome thought that is now going to launch some epic discussions, I'm sure of it. 
So now it's your turn to discuss what you've heard and to hear some other thoughts um, about what has been shared this morning. So now's your time to do that. Uh, I'm sure your life group leader already has the discussion questions there ready to go. Um, if not, the questions will be up on the screen too uh, if you're watching from home and you'd like to reflect on some questions as well. So have an awesome, awesome life group time and we will see you back here next week for our mini Pepster at Your Place. Happy Sabbath, everyone.